Hi, I'm Dr. Mimi Guarneri, and I'm the president of the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine and medical director of Guarneri Integrative Health, located at Pacific Pearl, La Jolla, in the beautiful town of downtown La Jolla, California. Pacific Pearl is a different kind of place where the best of conventional integrative and natural medicine comes together to enhance health and well-being. I'm so happy today to have with me Dr. Moira Fitzpatrick. Now, Dr. Fitzpatrick is special because not only is she a naturopathic doctor, but she's also a PhD psychologist. And she brings both of these incredible skills together to enhance our patients' health and well-being. So, Dr. Fitzpatrick, thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Great. You know, I um, know that a lot of people understand uh, natural medicine and natural medicine approaches to disease, um, but you're, you're sort of a special breed because you really focus on body and mind. And I just uh, wonder if you could tell us a little bit about uh, your whole program on holistic mental health. Well, I think the most important thing that I do is I connect with each person and really attune to where they are. And it's very important to me to hear their story. And in the story, I can often see where the problems are. And when I think about holistic mental health, I also think that it's very important to be a good primary care doctor first. So that you're really taking a look at what's going on physiologically with them in addition to whatever their uh, mental, emotional issues are. And I take a look at an individual from a whole systems perspective, really recognizing that all of health really begins in the gut. And then I take a look at how that's integrated into their blood sugar, their hormones, uh, take a look at how their neurotransmitters are affected. And once, once I have the whole picture, then I can also begin to see, you know, how is it, how do they think? And how does their thinking interfere or um, promote their health and well-being? And then I take a look at you know, what's going on emotionally and how are those emotions driving what's going on physiologically? Or how are those emotions fueling what's going on in terms of the way they think? But on the deepest level, what I want to do is to connect with them on a soul level. And I believe that that essential self is never touched and that part of the journey is to help that person get back in touch with their essential self. And it's from there that true healing can occur. That's really beautiful. Uh, I notice uh, a lot of my patients um, come to see you for many different reasons. And it um, seems to me that you, are, you have so many areas of expertise, women's health, Hormone, hormonal therapy, should I take hormones, should I not, what can I do to strengthen my bones? Um, you mentioned the gut, um, you know, being able to help people with common ailments like bloating and gas and uh, what we call leaky gut today. And then all of the things which plague our society, like anxiety and stress and depression. I mean, they, these, you're covering all the big bases. Right. What, a, what can somebody expect if they come in to see you, um, time-wise and uh, intake-wise? What is it like? So when someone first comes in, I really like to hear their story. And then we have a dialogue as we're going through the story. And I, I am quite thorough, so it takes um, 90 minutes to sometimes two hours. And then if they are primarily focused on mental emotional issues, I want to give them a taste of hypnotherapy or um, ETT or whatever tool seems most appropriate for that individual. Well, you, you just hit on something really important because it's not just about, um, you know, you do the nutrition piece and vitamins and supplements when they're needed and indicated, 
but you just slid by and said hypnotherapy, and I know you also do cranial sacral therapy, and I know you do a lot of biofield therapies, and they're quite profound. So maybe you could talk about some of those. So one of the things that I learned several years ago is that in healing begins first on an energy level, and once the the energetic field is healed, then it's much easier to heal on the physical level or even the, the mental emotional level. So I often combine cranial sacral therapy, which is a way of working with the energies of the cranium and the spine, but you're also really working with all of the major and minor energy centers of the body. And so when I do cranial sacral, I also take people on a journey. And that journey can be anywhere from helping them relax to using different imagery uh, to help them move to a deeper level or to utilize light and color to help them clear something. And then we always close a journey so that each journey has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So that when somebody actually leaves the room, my goal is that they feel better than when they came in. That's a great goal. Uh, what about someone who maybe wants to stop smoking or, you know, uh, deal with a, an addictive type of habit like that? Uh, what might an approach be? Well, a lot depends on the addiction and also the thinking that's behind it. So if somebody's ready to quit smoking, then typically hypnotherapy is, is useful. If somebody has a deep-seated uh, thought process, then we have to interrupt the thought process. And when I do that, I typically use a, a technique called emotional transformation therapy. And that makes use of light and color to actually interfere with the neurological pathway that's so deeply ingrained. And then once we interfere with that, there's an opening for a new neurological pathway and that's when I use the hypnotherapy to ground in uh, some new ideas and some new beliefs. And then typically we start a new chapter in the person's life called My Smoke Free Life. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I know I sent you a very complicated uh, smoker and inside of a week he still hasn't smoked and it's six months later. So that's pretty impressive, really impressive. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, how you might approach someone with a gut issue, what we would call in functional medicine, leaky gut. So I would find out what their specific symptoms are. So somebody who typically has leaky gut may experience gas and bloating. And so we go into, one of the things about nature paths is we talk about poop. And we find out um, if they have undigested food in their stool and just what their daily habits are. And then from there, I can determine, well, where in the GI tract is the problem? Is it in the upper GI tract? Is it in the stomach? Typically, somebody would have um, more nausea or indigestion or feel like food is just stuck there and is not moving. And then um, if somebody typically has a small intestinal issue, they, they will have gas and bloating several hours later. And then if somebody has more of an issue in the large intestine, then you typically see um, a lot of problems with constipation and, and, and sometimes diarrhea. So once we pinpoint where the problem is, then we take a look at, okay, so what are some of the contributing factors to the problem? Do they have food sensitivities? Are they really stressed? And if they're stressed, is that affecting their GI tract in some way? And of course, what they're eating. And um, oftentimes, people come in and they're gonna have to realize that they really need to change their diet. But the other thing that I do is I really educate people, as well as trying to see you know, where they are and, and their readiness. And it, I think it's through education that we really empower our patients. And if they want to be healthy, I can help them be healthy, but they're going to have to do the work. And that's where our Destination Health Retreats and our Destination Health Program comes in, because we can give the information, uh, which 
gives a lot of knowledge, but it's really practice and bringing that into our experience, taking that information and translating it into practice. That's really the key, the willingness to do that. Right? Absolutely, and I think it's really important to have a community, to have a group, so I that agree. when you feel like, you know, I don't really want to do this diet, but there's somebody else in the group that can say, you know, I've been gluten-free for three weeks now, and I'm feeling better than I've ever felt before, and it's motivation to keep them on the same track. Absolutely. You know, I just, um, I, I would really like to touch on uh, some of the fancy testing that you do. You do a lot of functional medicine testing when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. right? I, I notice uh, you do a lot of food sensitivity testing, and uh, sometimes you're looking at different hormonal pathways. Uh, maybe you can just touch base on what we would find with um, an adrenal stress index or some of the other neat tests that you do, because you really get into that underlying problem. I really try to, and one of my favorite tests is the adrenal stress index, because what that tells us is where the problem in that hypothalamic, the brain, pituitary adrenal axis is occurring. So somebody comes in and they're not able to sleep, and their cortisol goes up at night. Well, that tells us that we can treat that individual with perhaps some phosphatidylserine or um, let's say their cortisol rhythm is really low in the morning and they can't wake up. And so that we can give them some adaptogens or, or herbs that really support the, the brain and the adrenal axis or give them some licorice that will help boost that level of cortisol. And so I find that by utilizing that test that the treatment is more accurate. Another test that I really like is the GI effects because that tells us what the makeup of the microbiome is. It tells us if the individual has candida or an overgrowth in bacteria. It tells us if they have enough food for their colon cells. Uh, I like the uh, estrogen metabolism test mm -hmm. and particularly for women who have cancer. Uh, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, it tells me how well they're metabolizing their estrogen. And, and I, of course, the food sensitivity test, yeah. I really like that because people come in and they say, well, I can eat anything. I don't have any symptoms at all. And, and they get their food sensitivity test back and they're like astounded. And one of the... Um, I see many adolescents, and they come in with um, problems with their skin, and they see that they're sensitive to right. gluten and dairy, and boy, they're really motivated to stop eating those foods, and their skin clears up, they feel better about themselves. So I think the food sensitivity test is really valuable. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, one other question. Uh, you know, you see a lot of cancer patients, and I... Uh, Cancer is one of those areas where uh, a lot of the conventional specialists don't really understand uh, the good work that a naturopathic doctor can do. And I, I think it's one of those areas that's so important to have proper nutrition, proper mind-body techniques, hypnosis, all the cranial sacral relaxation, all the things you mentioned, um, and also sometimes vitamin infusion therapies. Uh, can you comment on that or how you might approach someone with cancer? Because you really are our go-to uh, naturopathic doctor for our cancer patients. Well, cancer patients, I think, are, are very special. They are individuals that are dealing with probably the most, one of the most frightening diseases. It's like they're looking at their mortality. So they're very motivated to make some changes. So I will often begin with their diet, and I'm really focused on an anti-inflammatory diet mm -hmm. that truly uh, food is medicine. But I'll also expand upon that and look at what type of cancer they have and what type of chemo or radiation or surgery they're doing. And so I think it's very important to prepare people for surgery and to provide nutrient support, homeopathic support, both before and after their surgery. And part of that preparation is also hypnotherapy so that they have created a journey so that they can get the maximum benefit from that 
surgery or from the chemo or from the radiation. So it becomes a positive experience. In addition to that, I will also utilize different mushrooms and herbs, and that will be dependent on their chemotherapy. And one of the things that many conventional doctors don't realize is that we have a lot of information about what herbs and what nutrients will interfere with which chemotherapy. So I attempt to stay on, on top of that. And then uh, there's growing evidence that uh, IV vitamin C is really helpful for many different types of cancers. And so I will talk to patients about that. And if they want to do it and we can get their oncologist on board, uh, then we'll do that type of treatment. Well, I think everything you're describing is amazing. And uh, from the prevention side to the treating of chronic disease to looking at people's pathways, repairing the gut, I mean, it, these are all the key issues where I think Western medicine is really falling short, conventional Western medicine. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I just want to say one more thing about cancer patients. When they do finish their conventional treatment, oftentimes they're dropped. There's nothing else mm -hmm. to do. And so it's really a great time to rebuild the immune system, to help them make some changes in their life. Because I can honestly say that 100% of the pa cancer patients that I see have had some kind of trauma within five years of their diagnosis. So there's some deep healing that, that can occur at this time. And that's powerful medicine. It is. Very powerful medicine. Thank you. Thank you.